All right, it's time for us to analyze the benzylic acid that we produced by the benzylic acid rearrangement. And I've got my uh, balance here. Since we're uh, weighing this at the same moment that I'm transferring it, we can just put this on the balance and hit the zero button. So we don't need to record the mass separately of the glass. All right, so the balance is zeroed with the watch glass on there. And so now I'll just transfer the uh, product onto this watch glass and uh, that should be that should be all we need to do for isolating this product today and weighing it so we can calculate a percent yield I'm trying to scrape off the uh, powder off of the uh, magnetic stir bar here do this at an angle that you might be able to see this. Actually the powder uh, seems a little bit moist, but I'm not using this balance for anything else for the next couple days, so I'm just going to put this on the tabletop here and uh, I'll weigh it periodically and we'll see what the uh, mass is course when it reaches constant weight that's when it should be the lowest mass and all of the water should be evaporated so this might need to go a few more days and um, it's Tuesday today so maybe by Thursday it'll be fully fully dry not quite as free flowing as you would expect a dry powder kind of like flour it's more like clumping together so I, I think it's a little bit wet still with water it always takes water a little bit longer to um, evaporate from a organic solid than it is for something like methanol or ethanol which have lower uh, boiling points and higher vapor pressure So that's a pretty clean filter paper there. And once again, um, just need to get around the perimeter here. There's always a little bit of solid that builds up around the, around the edges. So I won't remember this, so I'm gonna just take the camera around and uh, measure the mass here that we have and then I'll check it again on Thursday and uh, should be good okay one other reason for transferring it to the uh, watch glass is to kind of increase the surface area and that will allow the water to evaporate a little bit better so let's bring the camera around and there's our mass okay Seems quite high uh, in my mind. I don't remember what we started with, but um, there's there's a lot of water here. So we're gonna come back on uh, Thursday. You know, I'll just I'll just put this off to the. Well, I need to keep this on there, don't I? We'll come back Thursday and we'll see what the uh, the final reading is. All right, the uh, substance has been uh, sitting here for more than a day, almost a day and a half, and uh, that's the mass there with the 
watch glass and it's a nice, um, you know, white uh, powder. It's clumped up, of course. So now we'll do the uh, melting point. So here's our benzylic acid and uh, we've got our microcapillary that will load up. As usual, we want about two to three millimeters depth material in there. Tap this on a surface. And this is not going down. I uh, don't know if you can see that. It all just came out the top. Try this again. Sometimes jamming in all the full amount at once doesn't work and you have to do it in portions a millimeter at a time or so this material doesn't seem to be falling down too well yeah it just came out again got about half of what I need in there right now so let's try to get the other half in Got to be careful when doing this. Sometimes you can crack the glass and it can stab into your thumb or something like that uh, blood test they do. Okay, I've got, um, you know, more than I need there, about four millimeters. But let's go ahead and do that. So I've got my melting point apparatus here. Once again, I'll have one camera pointing at the uh, temperature reading here and uh, the other camera pointing uh, down the viewpoint here where my microcapillary is placed into an aluminum block that's heated. Uh, you wanna use a melting point from one literature uh, source. Many, um, you know, melting point literature references might have different numbers. So you wanna use one number. If it's 148 to 149, use that. If it's 150 to 151, use that, okay? Uh, maybe in your comment section, mention which reference you're using for the melting point. So I'll come back when this is ready and we'll take a melting point. All right, uh, using different devices for recording the temperature, but it reads 138.1 degrees Celsius right now. I've got my tube in here. It's a nice, nice white crystalline powder. And um, we'll go ahead and uh, start heating this guy up here. Ideally, you want to raise the temperature about one degree Celsius per minute. I tend to do it way too fast on the videos, but um, we'll go ahead and get our data and uh, be good to go. As always, you may fast forward through this video and rewatch it a few times to get to the points where you think you have the uh, beginning of melting and final point of melting. You don't need to play the video really slow for the full 15 20 minutes so uh, do what you need to do and thanks for watching and please do consider subscribing okay well I used my laptop computer to film the temperature reading on the melting point apparatus and apparently when my laptop went into the screensaver mode it just decided to take a still image for several minutes so it never did record the temperature going up and so there's no point in watching this video this experiment was not adequately recorded so on your lab reports you may go ahead and place na capital n capital a which stands for not applicable we cannot do this uh, measurement in the small amount of time remaining uh, so yeah but anyways that's how you would do the melting point, and hopefully you know how to do this for advanced classes that you might do in the future. Take it easy.